In probability theory, the central limit theorem CLT establishes that, in some situations, when independent random variables are added, their properly normalized sum tends toward a normal distribution informally a bell curve even if the original variables themselves are not normally distributed. The theorem is a key concept in probability theory because it implies that probabilistic and statistical methods that work for normal distributions can be applicable to many problems involving other types of distributions. For example, suppose that a sample is obtained containing a large number of observations, each observation being randomly generated in a way that does not depend on the values of the other observations, and that the arithmetic mean of the observed values is computed. If this procedure is performed many times, the central limit theorem says that the distribution of the average will be closely approximated by a normal distribution. A simple example of this is that if one flips a coin many times the probability of getting a given number of heads in a series of flips will approach a normal curve, with mean equal to half the total number of flips in each series. In the limit of an infinite number of flips, it will equal a normal curve. The central limit theorem has a number of variants. In its common form, the random variables must be identically distributed. In variance, convergence of the mean to the normal distribution also occurs for non-identical distributions or for non-independent observations, given that they comply with certain conditions. The earliest version of this theorem, that the normal distribution may be used as an approximation to the binomial distribution, is now known as the de Mavre-Laplace theorem. In more general usage, a central limit theorem is any of a set of weak convergence theorems in probability theory. They all express the fact that a sum of many independent and identically distributed I, I, D, random variables, or alternatively, random variables with specific types of dependence, will tend to be distributed according to one of a small set of attractor distributions. When the variance of the I, I, D, variables is finite, the attractor distribution is the normal distribution. In contrast, the sum of a number of I, I, D, random variables with power law tail distributions decreasing as, X, minus alpha minus 1 where 0. Independent sequences Topic Classical CLT Let X one, XN be a random sample of size N that is, a sequence of independent and identically distributed I, I, D, random variables drawn from a distribution of expected value given by micro and finite variance given by σ2. Suppose we are interested in the sample average S N equals X 1 plus plus x n n display style s underscore n equals frac x underscore 1 plus c d o t s plus x underscore n n of these random variables by the law of large numbers, the sample averages converge in probability and almost surely to the expected value micro as n infinity. 
The classical central limit theorem describes the size and the distributional form of the stochastic fluctuations around the deterministic number micro during this convergence. More precisely, it states that as n gets larger, the distribution of the difference between the sample average Sn and its limit micro, when multiplied by the factor square root n that is square root n Sn minus micro, approximates the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance σ2. For large enough n, the distribution of Sn is close to the normal distribution with mean micro and variance σ2, n. The usefulness of the theorem is that the distribution of square root n Sn micro approaches normality regardless of the shape of the distribution of the individual Xi. Formally, the theorem can be stated as follows. Lindbergh Levy CLT. Suppose x1, x2, is a sequence of i, i, d. Random variables with e she. Topic micro and var she sigma 2 n s n minus mu d n 0 sigma 2 display style s q r t n left s underscore n mu right x right arrow d n left 0 sigma caret 2 right in the case sigma greater than 0 convergence in distribution means that the cumulative distribution function functions of square root n sn minus micro converge pointwise to the cdf of the n 0 sigma 2 distribution for every real number z lim n infinity pr n sn minus mu z equals phi z sigma display style lim underscore n to n t pr left sqrt n s underscore n mu Leq z right equals phi left frac z sigma right, where phi x is the standard normal CDF evaluated at x. Note that the convergence is uniform in z in the sense that lim n infinity sub z element of r p r n s n minus mu z minus phi z sigma equals 0 Display style lim underscore n to n f t sub underscore z in math b r left p r left s q r t n s underscore n mu l e q z right phi left f r a c z sigma right right equals zero where sub denotes the least upper bound or supremum of the set. Topic Lepinov CLT. The theorem is named after Russian mathematician Alexander Lepinov. In this variant of the central limit theorem, the random variables she have to be independent, but not necessarily identically distributed. The theorem also requires that random variables, she, have moments of some order, 2 plus delta, and that the rate of growth of these moments is limited by the Lepinov condition given below. Lepinov CLT. Suppose x1, x2, is a sequence of independent random variables, each with finite expected value mu i and variance sigma 2 i. Define S N two equals 
I equals one N Sigma I two Display style S underscore N carrot two equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N sigma underscore I carrot two If for some delta greater than zero, Lepinov's condition Lim N infinity one S N Two plus delta I equals one N E X I minus mu I two plus delta equals zero Display style lim underscore N two in a T F R A C one S underscore N carrot two plus delta sum underscore I equals one carrot N operator name E left X underscore I mu underscore I carrot two plus delta right equals zero is satisfied, then a sum of she minus mu i, s n converges in distribution to a standard normal random variable, as n goes to infinity 1 s n i equals 1 n x i Minus mu i d n zero one display style frac one s underscore n sum underscore i equals one caret n left x underscore i mu underscore i right x right arrow d n zero one in practice it is usually easiest to check Lepinov's condition for delta equals 1. If a sequence of random variables satisfies Lepinov's condition, then it also satisfies Lindbergh's condition. The converse implication, however, does not hold. Lindbergh CLT In the same setting and with the same notation as above, the Lepinov condition can be replaced with the following weaker one from Lindbergh in 1920. Suppose that for every epsilon greater than zero, lim n infinity. One S N two I equals one N E X I minus mu I two one X I minus mu I greater than epsilon S N equals zero 
Display style lim underscore n two inaf t frac one s underscore n caret two sum underscore i equals one caret n operator name e left x underscore i mu underscore i caret two c d o t math b f one underscore x underscore i mu underscore i greater than var epsilon s underscore n right equals 0 where 1 is the indicator function then the distribution of the standardized sums 1 s n i equals 1 n x i minus mu i display style frac 1 s underscore n sum underscore i equals 1 caret n left x underscore i mu underscore i right converges towards the standard normal distribution n 0 1 topic Multidimensional CLT Proofs that use characteristic functions can be extended to cases where each individual she is a random vector in K, with mean vector μ equals E she and covariance matrix σ among the components of the vector, and these random vectors are independent and identically distributed. Summation of these vectors is being done componentwise. The multidimensional central limit theorem states that when scaled, sums converge to a multivariate normal distribution. Let x i equals x i one x i K display style math BF X underscore I equals begin B matrix X underscore I one V D O T S X underscore I K end B matrix B the K vector. The bold in she means that it is a random vector, not a random univariate variable. Then the sum of the random vectors will be x one one x one k plus x two one x two k plus plus x n 1 x n k equals i equals 1 n x i 1 i equals one N X I K equals I equals one N X I Display style begin B matrix X underscore one one V D O T S X underscore one K end B matrix plus begin B matrix X underscore two one V D O T S X underscore two K end 
B matrix plus C D O T S plus begin B matrix X underscore N one V D O T S X underscore N K end B matrix equals begin B matrix sum underscore I equals one carrot N left X underscore I one right V D O T S sum underscore I equals one carrot N left X underscore I K right end B matrix equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N math B F X underscore I and the average is one N I equals one N X I equals one N I equals one N X I one I equals one N X I K equals X I one X I K equals X N Display style FRAC one N sum underscore I equals one carrot N Math BF X underscore I equals FRAC one N begin B matrix sum underscore I equals one carrot N X underscore I one V D O T S sum underscore I equals one carrot N X underscore I K end B matrix equals begin B matrix bar X underscore I one V D O T S bar X underscore I K end B matrix equals Math B F bar X underscore N and therefore one N I equals one N X I minus E X I equals one N I equals one N X I Minus mu equals n x n minus mu display style frac 1 sqrt n sum underscore i equals 1 caret n left math bf x underscore i operator name e left x underscore i right right equals frac 1 sqrt n sum underscore i equals 1 caret n math bf x underscore i bold symbol Mu equals SQRT N left overline Math BF X underscore N bold symbol mu right. The multivariate central limit theorem states that N X N minus mu D N K zero sigma display style sqrt n left overline math bf x underscore n bold symbol mu right stackrel d right arrow n underscore k zero bold symbol sigma 
where the covariance matrix sigma is equal to sigma equals var x 1 1 cov x 1 1 x 1 2 cov x 1 1 x 1 3 cov x 1 1 x 1 k cov x 1 2 x 1 1 var x 1 2 cov x 1 2 x 1 3 cov x 1 2 x 1 k cov x 1 3 x 1 1 cov x 1 3 x 1 2 var x 1 3 cov x 1 3 x 1 k cov x 1 k x 1 1 cov x 1 k x 1 2 cov x1 k x1 3 var x1 k display style bold symbol sigma equals begin b matrix operator name var left x underscore 1 1 right and operator name cov left x underscore 1 1 x underscore 1 2 right and operator name cov left x underscore 1 1 x underscore 1 3 right and c d o t s n operator name c o v left x underscore 1 1 x underscore 1 k right operator name c o v left x underscore 1 2 x underscore 1 1 right and operator name v a r left x underscore 1 2 right and operator name cov left x underscore 1 2 x underscore 1 3 right and c d o t s n operator name cov left x underscore 1 2 x underscore 1 k right operator name cov left x underscore 1 3 x underscore 1 1 right and operator name cov left 
x underscore one three x underscore one two right and operator name VAR left x underscore one three right and C D O T S and operator name C O V left x underscore one three x underscore one K right V D O T S and V D O T S and V D O T S and D dots and V D O T S operator name C O V left x underscore one K x underscore one one right and operator name C O V left x underscore one K x underscore one two right and operator name C O V left x underscore one K x underscore one three right and C D O T S and operator name V A R left x underscore one K right end B matrix the rate of convergence is given by the following Bariesine type result theorem let x one x n display style x underscore one dots x underscore n be independent R D display style R caret D valued random vectors, each having mean zero. Right S equals I equals one N X I displaystyle S equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N X underscore I and assume Sigma equals C O V S displaystyle Sigma equals operator name C O V S is invertible. Let Z N zero Sigma Display style Z sim N zero Sigma B A D Display style D Dimensional Gaussian with the same mean and covariance matrix as S display style S then for all convex sets U R D display style U subset R caret D P R S element of U minus P R Z element of U C D one four Gamma Display style P R S in U P R Z in U L E Q C D carrot one quarter Gamma where C display style C is a universal constant gamma equals I equals 1 n e Sigma minus 1 2 X I two three displaystyle gamma equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N operator name E sigma carrot minus one half x underscore I underscore two carrot three and two Displaystyle C D O T underscore two denotes the Euclidean norm on R D Displaystyle R carrot D. It is unknown whether the factor 
d 1 4 display style d caret 1 quarter is necessary Topic generalized theorem The central limit theorem states that the sum of a number of independent and identically distributed random variables with finite variances will tend to a normal distribution as the number of variables grows. A generalization due to Nadenko and Kolmogorov states that the sum of a number of random variables with a power law tail, Parisian tail distributions decreasing as, x, minus alpha minus 1 where O2 then the sum converges to a stable distribution with stability parameter equal to 2, i.e. a Gaussian distribution. Topic: Dependent processes. Topic: CLT under weak dependence. A useful generalization of a sequence of independent, identically distributed random variables is a mixing random process in discrete time. Mixing means, roughly, that random variables temporally far apart from one another are nearly independent. Several kinds of mixing are used in ergodic theory and probability theory. See especially strong mixing, also called alpha mixing, defined by alpha n zero, where alpha n is so-called strong mixing coefficient. A simplified formulation of the central limit theorem under strong mixing is Theorem Suppose that x1, x2, is stationary and alpha mixing with alpha n Topic O N minus five and that E X N zero and E X twelve N Sigma two equals Lim N E S N two N display style Sigma carrot two equals Lim underscore N F R A C operator name E left S underscore N carrot two right N exists, and if Sigma does not equal zero then S N Sigma square where root n converges in distribution to n 0, 1. In fact, σ2 equals e x12 plus 2k equals 1 infinity e x1 x1 plus k. Display style σ2 equals operator name e left x underscore 1 caret 2 right plus 2 sum underscore k equals 1 caret inft operator name e left x underscore 1 1 x underscore 1 plus k right where the series converges absolutely the assumption sigma does not equal 0 cannot be omitted since the asymptotic normality fails for x n equals y n minus y n minus 1 where y n are another stationary sequence there is a stronger version of the theorem. The assumption e x twelve n n alpha n delta two two plus delta infinity display style sum underscore n alpha underscore n caret frac delta two two plus delta existence of such delta greater than zero ensures the conclusion. For encyclopedic treatment of limit theorems under mixing conditions, see Bradley, 2007. Topic: <laughs> Martingale difference CLT. Theorem: Let a Martingale Minnesota satisfy one n. K equals one N E M K 
minus m k minus 1 2 m 1 m k minus 1 1 Display style FRAC one N sum underscore K equals one carrot N operator name E left left M underscore K M underscore K one right carrot two M underscore one dots M underscore K one right to one in probability as N infinity for every epsilon greater than zero one N K equals one N E M K minus M K minus one two M K minus M K minus one greater than Epsilon N zero Display style FRAC one N sum underscore K equals one carrot N operator name E left left M underscore K M underscore K one right carrot two M underscore K M underscore K one greater than VAR epsilon SQRT N right to zero as N infinity then Minnesota square root n converges in distribution to n zero one as n infinity. Caution: the restricted expectation e x a should not be confused with the conditional expectation e x a equals e x a p a equals. Topic Remarks Equals Topic Proof of Classical CLT The central limit theorem has a simple proof using characteristic functions. It is similar to the proof of the weak law of large numbers. Assume x1, xn are independent and identically distributed random variables, each with mean micro and finite variance σ2. The sum x1 plus, plus xn has mean n micro and variance n σ2. Consider the random variable z n equals x 1 plus plus x n minus n mu n sigma 2 equals i equals 1 N X I minus mu N Sigma two equals I equals one N one N Y I 
Display style z underscore n equals frac x underscore one plus c d o t s plus x underscore n n mu s q r t n sigma caret two equals sum underscore i equals one caret n frac x underscore i mu s q r t n sigma caret two equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N F R A C one S Q R T N Y underscore I where in the last step we defined the new random variables ye topic she minus mu sigma each with zero mean and unit variance V A R Y One, the characteristic function of z n is given by phi z n t equals phi i equals one n one n y I T equals Phi Y one T N Phi Y two T N Phi Y N T N equals Phi Y one T N N Display style varphi underscore z underscore n t equals varphi underscore sum underscore i equals one caret n frac one s q r t n y underscore i t equals varphi underscore y underscore one left frac t s q r t n right varphi underscore y underscore Two left frac t s q r t n right c d o t s varphi underscore y underscore n left frac t s q r t n right equals left varphi underscore y underscore one left frac t s q r t n right right caret n where in the last step we used the fact that all of the ye are identically distributed. The characteristic function of y1 is, by Taylor's theorem, phi y 1 t n equals 1 minus t Two two N plus O T two N T N zero Display style varphi underscore y underscore one left frac t s q r t n right equals one frac t caret two two n plus o left frac t caret two n right quad big frac t s q r t n big right arrow zero where O T two is little O notation for some function of T that goes to zero more rapidly than T two. 
by the limit of the exponential function x equals lim 1 plus x n n the characteristic function of z n equals phi z n t equals 1 minus t 2 2 n plus o t 2 n n e minus 1 2 t 2 n infinity Display style var phi underscore z underscore n t equals left one frac t caret two two n plus o left frac t caret two n right right caret n right arrow e caret frac one two t caret two quad n right arrow in a t Note that all of the higher order terms vanish in the limit n infinity. The right hand side equals the characteristic function of a standard normal distribution n, 0, 1, which implies through Levy's continuity theorem that the distribution of Z n will approach n 0, 1, as n infinity. Therefore, the sum x1 plus, plus xn will approach that of the normal distribution n, n micro, n sigma 2, and the sample average S n equals x1 plus plus x n n display style s underscore n equals frac x underscore one plus c d o t s plus x underscore n n converges to the normal distribution n micro sigma two n from which the central limit theorem follows. Topic: Convergence to the limit. The central limit theorem gives only an asymptotic distribution. As an approximation for a finite number of observations, it provides a reasonable approximation only when close to the peak of the normal distribution. It requires a very large number of observations to stretch into the tails. The convergence in the central limit theorem is uniform because the limiting cumulative distribution function is continuous. If the third central moment E x1 minus mu 3 exists and is finite, then the speed of convergence is at least on the order of 1 square root n. See Barry Essien theorem. Stein's method can be used not only to prove the central limit theorem, but also to provide bounds on the rates of convergence for selected metrics. The convergence to the normal distribution is monotonic, in the sense that the entropy of Zn increases monotonically to that of the normal distribution. The central limit theorem applies in particular to sums of independent and identically distributed discrete discrete random variables. A sum of discrete random variables is still a discrete random variable, so that we are confronted with a sequence of discrete random variables whose cumulative probability distribution function converges towards a cumulative probability distribution function corresponding to a continuous variable, namely that of the normal distribution. This means that if we build a histogram of the realizations of 
the sum of n independent identical discrete variables, the curve that joins the centers of the upper faces of the rectangles forming the histogram converges toward a Gaussian curve as n approaches infinity. This relation is known as de Mavre Laplace theorem. The binomial distribution article details such an application of the central limit theorem in the simple case of a discrete variable taking only two possible values. Topic: <laughs> Relation to the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers as well as the central limit theorem are partial solutions to a general problem. What is the limiting behavior of Sn as n approaches infinity? In mathematical analysis, asymptotic series are one of the most popular tools employed to approach such questions. Suppose we have an asymptotic expansion of f n f n equals a 1 phi 1 n plus a 2 phi 2 n plus o phi 3 n n infinity display style f n equals a underscore 1 var phi underscore 1 n plus a underscore 2 var phi underscore 2 n plus o big var phi underscore 3 n big q quad n right arrow in a t Dividing both parts by phi 1 n and taking the limit will produce a 1, the coefficient of the highest order term in the expansion, which represents the rate at which f n changes in its leading term. Lim n infinity f n phi 1 n equals a 1 display style lim underscore n to n f t f r a c f n var phi underscore 1 n equals a underscore 1 informally one can say f n grows approximately as a 1 phi 1 n Taking the difference between f n and its approximation and then dividing by the next term in the expansion, we arrive at a more refined statement about f n lim n infinity f n minus a 1 phi 1 n phi 2 n equals a 2 display style lim underscore n 2 n f t f r a c f n a underscore 1 var phi underscore 1 n var phi underscore 2 n equals a underscore 2 here one can say that the difference between the function and its approximation grows approximately as a 2 phi 2 n. The idea is that dividing the function by appropriate normalizing functions, and looking at the limiting behavior of the result, can tell us much about the limiting behavior of the original function itself. Informally, something along these lines happens when the sum, S n, of independent identically distributed random variables, x1, xn, is studied in classical probability theory. 
if each she has finite mean μ, then by the law of large numbers, S n, n μ. If in addition each she has finite variance σ2, then by the central limit theorem, S n minus n mu n she display style frac s underscore n n mu sqrt n right arrow she where she is distributed as n zero sigma two this provides values of the first two constants in the informal expansion s n approximately equals mu n plus she n Display style s underscore n approximately mu n plus she s q r t n. In the case where the she do not have finite mean or variance, convergence of the shifted and rescaled sum can also occur with different centering and scaling factors. S n minus a n b n she display style frac s underscore n a underscore n b underscore n right arrow she or informally s n approximately equals a n plus she b n display style s underscore n approximately a underscore n plus she b underscore n distributions she which can arise in this way are called stable Clearly, the normal distribution is stable, but there are also other stable distributions, such as the Cauchy distribution, for which the mean or variance are not defined. The scaling factor Bn may be proportional to Nc, for any c one half, it may also be multiplied by a slowly varying function of n. The law of the iterated logarithm specifies what is happening in between the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. Specifically it says that the normalizing function square root n log log n, intermediate in size between n of the law of large numbers and square root n of the central limit theorem, provides a non-trivial limiting behavior. <laughs> Alternative statements of the theorem Topic: Density functions. The density of the sum of two or more independent variables is the convolution of their densities, if these densities exist. Thus, the central limit theorem can be interpreted as a statement about the properties of density functions under convolution. The convolution of a number of density functions tends to the normal density as the number of density functions increases without bound. These theorems require stronger hypotheses than the forms of the central limit theorem given above. Theorems of this type are often called local limit theorems. See Petrov for a particular local limit theorem for sums of independent and identically distributed random variables. <laughs> <laughs> Characteristic functions 
Since the characteristic function of a convolution is the product of the characteristic functions of the densities involved, the central limit theorem has yet another restatement, the product of the characteristic functions of a number of density functions becomes close to the characteristic function of the normal density as the number of density functions increases without bound, under the conditions stated above. Specifically, an appropriate scaling factor needs to be applied to the argument of the characteristic function. An equivalent statement can be made about Fourier transforms, since the characteristic function is essentially a Fourier transform. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Calculating the variance. Let S n be the sum of n random variables. Many central limit theorems provide conditions such that S n square root v a r S n converges in distribution to n 0 1 the normal distribution with mean 0 variance 1 as n infinity. In some cases, it is possible to find a constant σ2 and function f n such that S n, sigma square root n f n converges in distribution to n 0, 1 as n infinity. Lemma. Suppose x 1 x 2 Display style x underscore one x underscore two dots is a sequence of real valued and strictly stationary random variables with e x i equals zero. Display style math b e x underscore i equals zero. For all i display style i g zero one r display style g zero one right arrow math b r and s n equals i equals 1 n g i n x i display style s underscore n equals sum underscore i equals 1 caret n g t f r a c i n x underscore i construct Sigma two equals E x one two plus two I equals one infinity E x one x 1 plus i display style sigma caret 2 equals math b e x underscore 1 caret 2 plus 2 sum underscore i equals 1 caret in a t math b e x underscore 1 x underscore 1 plus i if i equals 1 infinity e x 1 x 1 plus i Display style sum underscore i equals one caret in a t math b e x underscore one x underscore one plus i is absolutely convergent zero 
1 g x g x d x infinity display style left int underscore 0 caret 1 g x g x d x right and 0 o 1 g x 2 d x infinity display style 0 then v a r s n n gamma n sigma 2 display style mathrm v a r s underscore n n gamma underscore n right arrow sigma Carrot two as n infinity display style n right arrow in a t where gamma n equals one n i equals one n g i n two display style gamma underscore n equals frac one n sum underscore i equals one carrot n g t frac i n carrot two if in addition Sigma greater than zero display style sigma greater than zero n s n v a r s n Display style s underscore n s q r t mathrm v a r s underscore n converges in distribution to n zero one. Display style math call n zero one as n infinity. Display style n right arrow in a t. Then s n sigma n gamma n display style s underscore n sigma s q r t n gamma underscore n also converges in distribution to n 0 1 display style math call n 0 1 as n infinity display style n right arrow in a t topic extensions Topic: Products of positive random variables. The logarithm of a product is simply the sum of the logarithms of the factors. Therefore, when the logarithm of a product of random variables that take only positive values approaches a normal distribution, the product itself approaches a log-normal distribution. Many physical quantities especially mass or length, which are a matter of scale and cannot be negative are the products of different random factors, so they follow a log-normal distribution. This multiplicative version of the central limit theorem is sometimes called Gibrat's law. Whereas the central limit theorem for sums of random variables requires the condition of finite variance, the corresponding theorem for products requires the corresponding condition that the density function be square integrable. <laughs> Beyond the classical framework Asymptotic normality, that is, convergence to the normal distribution after appropriate shift and rescaling, is a phenomenon much more general than the classical framework treated above, namely, sums of independent random variables or vectors. 
new frameworks are revealed from time to time, no single unifying framework is available for now. Topic. Convex body Theorem. There exists a sequence epsilon n0 for which the following holds. Let n1, and let random variables x1, xn have a log concave joint density f such that f x1, xn. Topic F x one x n for all x one x n and E x two k. One for all k equals one n. Then the distribution of x one plus plus x n. N displaystyle FRAC x underscore one plus C D O T S plus x underscore N S Q R T N is epsilon N close to N zero one in the total variation distance. These two epsilon n close distributions have densities in fact, log concave densities, thus, the total variance distance between them is the integral of the absolute value of the difference between the densities. Convergence in total variation is stronger than weak convergence. An important example of a log concave density is a function constant inside a given convex body and vanishing outside, it corresponds to the uniform distribution on the convex body, which explains the term, "...central limit theorem for convex bodies." Another example, f x1, xn. Topic const exp minus x1 alpha plus plus xn alpha beta where alpha greater than one and ab greater than one. If beta one then f x1 xn factorizes into const exp minus x1 alpha exp minus xn alpha, which means x1 xn are independent. In general, however, they are dependent. The condition f x1 xn equals f x1 xn ensures that x1 xn are of zero mean and uncorrelated. Still, they need not be independent, nor even pairwise independent. By the way, pairwise independence cannot replace independence in the classical central limit theorem, here is a Berry-Essene type result. Theorem. Let x1, xn satisfy the assumptions of the previous theorem, then, p a x1 plus plus x n n b minus 1 2 pi a b e minus 1 2 t 2 d t c n display style left math b p left a l e q f r a c x underscore 1 plus c d o t s plus x underscore N S Q R T N L E Q B right F R A C one S Q R T two Pi int underscore a carrot B Mathem E carrot F R A C one two T carrot two D T right L E Q F R A C C N for all a Moreover, for every C1, Cn element of such that C21 plus, plus C2n equals 1 P A C 1 X 1 plus plus C N X N B 
minus one two pi a b e minus one two t two d t c c one four plus plus C N four Display style left Math B P left a L E Q C underscore one X underscore one plus C D O T S plus C underscore N X underscore N L E Q B right F R A C one S Q R T two Pi int underscore a carrot B Mathem E carrot F R A C one two T carrot two D T right L E Q C left C underscore one carrot four plus dots plus C underscore N carrot four right The distribution of X one plus plus X N square root N need not be approximately normal, in fact, it can be uniform. However, the distribution of C one X one plus plus C N X N is close to N zero one in the total variation distance for most vectors C one C N according to the uniform distribution on the sphere C twenty one plus plus C two N equals one equals Topic Lacunary trigonometric series Topic Theorem Salem Zygmunt, let U be a random variable distributed uniformly on zero, two pi, and x k r k cos n k u plus ac, where n k satisfy the lacunarity condition, there exists q greater than one such that n k plus one q n k for all k, r k are such that r one two plus r two two plus equals infinity and R K two R one two plus plus R K two zero display style R underscore one carrot two plus R underscore two carrot two plus C D O T S equals in a T quad text and quad F R A C R underscore K carrot two R underscore one carrot two plus C D O T T S plus R underscore K carrot two to zero zero ac. Then X one plus plus X K R one two plus plus R K two Display style FRAC x underscore one plus C D O T S plus x underscore K S Q R T R underscore one carrot two plus C D O T S plus R underscore K carrot two converges in distribution to N zero one half Topic Gaussian polytopes Theorem Let A one and B independent random points on the plane two each having the two dimensional standard normal distribution. Let Kn be the convex hull of these points, and Xn the area of Kn then X N Minus E X N V A R 
x n display style frac x underscore n mathrm e x underscore n sqrt operator name var x underscore n converges in distribution to n 0 1 as n tends to infinity the same also holds in all dimensions greater than 2 the polytope Kn is called a Gaussian random polytope. A similar result holds for the number of vertices of the Gaussian polytope, the number of edges, and in fact, faces of all dimensions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Linear functions of orthogonal matrices. A linear function of a matrix M is a linear combination of its elements with given coefficients, mtr AM, where A is the matrix of the coefficients, C trace linear algebra hashtag inner product. A random orthogonal matrix is said to be distributed uniformly, if its distribution is the normalized Haar measure on the orthogonal group O n. See rotation matrix hashtag uniform random rotation matrices. Theorem let M be a random orthogonal n times n matrix distributed uniformly, and A a fixed n times n matrix such that T R double A asterisk. Topic n and let X T R A M. Then the distribution of X is close to n 0, 1 in the total variation metric up to 2 square root 3, n minus 1. Topic subsequences theorem. Let random variables x1, x2, element of L2 omega be such that xn0 weakly in L2 omega and xn1 weakly in L1 omega. Then there exist integers n1 xn1 plus plus xn kk display style frac x underscore n underscore one plus c d o t s plus x underscore n underscore k s q r t k converges in distribution to n zero one as k tends to infinity. Topic: Random walk on a crystal lattice. The central limit theorem may be established for the simple random walk on a crystal lattice, an infinite fold abelian covering graph over a finite graph, and is used for design of crystal structures. Topic. Applications and examples Topic <inaudible> Simple example A simple example of the central limit theorem is rolling a large number of identical, unbiased dice. The distribution of the sum or average of the rolled numbers will be well approximated by a normal distribution. Since real-world quantities are often the balanced sum of many unobserved random events, the central limit theorem also provides a partial explanation for the prevalence of the normal probability distribution. It also justifies the approximation of large sample statistics to the normal distribution in controlled experiments. Topic: <laughs> Real applications. Published literature contains a number of useful and interesting examples and applications relating to the central limit theorem. 
One source states the following examples. The probability distribution for total distance covered in a random walk biased or unbiased will tend toward a normal distribution. Flipping a large number of coins will result in a normal distribution for the total number of heads or equivalently total number of tails. From another viewpoint, the central limit theorem explains the common appearance of the bell curve in density estimates applied to real-world data. In cases like electronic noise, examination grades, and so on, we can often regard a single measured value as the weighted average of a large number of small effects. Using generalizations of the central limit theorem, we can then see that this would often though not always, produce a final distribution that is approximately normal. In general, the more a measurement is like the sum of independent variables with equal influence on the result, the more normality it exhibits. This justifies the common use of this distribution to stand in for the effects of unobserved variables in models like the linear model. Regression Regression analysis and in particular ordinary least squares specifies that a dependent variable depends according to some function upon one or more independent variables, with an additive error term. Various types of statistical inference on the regression assume that the error term is normally distributed. This assumption can be justified by assuming that the error term is actually the sum of a large number of independent error terms, even if the individual error terms are not normally distributed. By the central limit theorem, their sum can be well approximated by a normal distribution. Topic: Other illustrations. Given its importance to statistics, a number of papers and computer packages are available that demonstrate the convergence involved in the central limit theorem. History Dutch mathematician Henk Tijms writes, the central limit theorem has an interesting history. The first version of this theorem was postulated by the French-born mathematician Abraham de Mavre who, in a remarkable article published in 1733, used the normal distribution to approximate the distribution of the number of heads resulting from many tosses of a fair coin. This finding was far ahead of its time, and was nearly forgotten until the famous French mathematician Pierre-Simon Laplace rescued it from obscurity in his monumental work Théorie analytique des probabilités, which was published in 1812. Laplace expanded de Mavre's finding by approximating the binomial distribution with the normal distribution. But as with de Mavre, Laplace's finding received little attention in his own time. It was not until the 19th century was at an end that the importance of the central limit theorem was discerned, when, in 1901, Russian mathematician Alexander Lepinov defined it in general terms and proved precisely how it worked mathematically. Nowadays, the central limit theorem is considered to be the unofficial sovereign of probability theory. Sir Francis Galton described the central limit theorem in this way. I know of scarcely anything so apt to impress the imagination as the wonderful form of cosmic order expressed by the law of frequency of error. 
The law would have been personified by the Greeks and deified, if they had known of it. It reigns with serenity and in complete self-effacement, amidst the wildest confusion. The huger the mob, and the greater the apparent anarchy, the more perfect is its sway. It is the supreme law of unreason. Whenever a large sample of chaotic elements are taken in hand and marshalled in the order of their magnitude, an unsuspected and most beautiful form of regularity proves to have been latent all along. The actual term, "'Central Limit Theorem' in German, "'Zentraler Grenzwertsatz' was first used by George Paglia in 1920 in the title of a paper. Paglia referred to the theorem as «central» due to its importance in probability theory. According to Le Cam, the French school of probability interprets the word «central» in the sense that it describes the behavior of the center of the distribution as opposed to its tails. The abstract of the paper on the central limit theorem of calculus of probability and the problem of moments by Paglia in 1920 translates as follows. The occurrence of the Gaussian probability density 1 equals e minus x2 in repeated experiments, in errors of measurements, which result in the combination of very many and very small elementary errors, in diffusion processes etc., can be explained, as is well known, by the very same limit theorem, which plays a central role in the calculus of probability. The actual discoverer of this limit theorem is to be named Laplace. It is likely that its rigorous proof was first given by Chebyshev, and its sharpest formulation can be found, as far as I am aware of, in an article by Lyapunov. A thorough account of the theorem's history, detailing Laplace's foundational work, as well as Cauchy's, Bessel's and Poisson's contributions, is provided by Hald. Two historical accounts, one covering the development from Laplace to Cauchy, the second the contributions by von Mises, Paglia, Lindbergh, Levy, and Kramer during the 1920s, are given by Hans Fischer. Le Cam describes a period around 1935. Bernstein presents a historical discussion focusing on the work of Pafnuty Chebyshev and his students Andrei Markov and Alexander Lepinov that led to the first proofs of the CLT in a general setting. Through the 1930s, progressively more general proofs of the central limit theorem were presented. Many natural systems were found to exhibit Gaussian distributions—a typical example being height distributions for humans. When statistical methods such as analysis of variance became established in the early 1900s, it became increasingly common to assume underlying Gaussian distributions. A curious footnote to the history of the central limit theorem is that a proof of a result similar to the 1922 Lindbergh CLT was the subject of Alan Turing's 1934 fellowship dissertation for King's College at the University of Cambridge. Only after submitting the work did Turing learn it had already been proved. Consequently, Turing's dissertation was not published. See also Asymptotic equipartition property Asymptotic distribution Benford's law, result of extension of CLT to product of random variables. Barry-Essene theorem 
Central Limit Theorem for Directional Statistics Central Limit Theorem applied to the case of directional statistics. Delta method to compute the limit distribution of a function of a random variable. Erdős KAC theorem connects the number of prime factors of an integer with the normal probability distribution. Fisher Tippett Nadenko theorem limit theorem for extremum values such as max xn. Tweedy convergence theorem, a theorem that can be considered to bridge between the central limit theorem and the Poisson convergence theorem. Irwin Hall distribution, Bates distribution, Normal distribution. Equals equals notes. <laughs>